Good morning. I'm Malcolm Graham Wood, and I'm here at the shiny new Core London studios for my CEO interview. And my guest today is uh, is Paul Blakely, who is president and the CEO of Jade Stone Energy. Morning, Paul. Great to see you again. Good morning, Malcolm. It's good to be here. Excellent. Now, as always, uh, what I'd like to do to begin with is ask uh, my guest to uh, uh, to try and explain to people who either don't know Jade Stone very well. I give them a snapshot of the uh, of the portfolio that you've got at the moment. Sure, the, the, the history of Jadestone, of course, comes from Talisman Energy, w where we operated across Asia Pacific for many many years. Uh, we formed Jadestone with um, a core team from Talisman about seven years ago, mm -hmm. and the strategy is pretty straightforward. It's one that's. Um, you see all over the North Sea, but not so much in Asia Pacific, picking up assets from the majors, looking to reinvest, uh, increase reserves. Uh, and in the case of Asia Pacific, particularly looking for gas opportunities uh, to develop and, and bring to the domestic market. Uh, and over the years, um, we started with uh, a couple of acquisitions in Australia, the stag field mm -hmm. to begin with, which really got us going. Uh, as an operator, accredited, and importantly, gave us the credentials to to move into other and larger opportunities. And so, you know, the next asset we acquired was Montara in 2018, and we wouldn't even have been in the data room had we not already been an approved operator in Australia, yeah. in the stag. So it was an important first step. And, and then subsequently, we've developed uh, or almost uh, completed a development of a gas field um, onshore Sumatra in Indonesia. We've acquired producing assets in Malaysia, drilled our first wells there last year, which were great, and, and we look forward to more to come. Um, we've added more production in Australia through uh, CWLH, um, acquisitions from BP and Mimi. Um, uh, and now the only legacy asset that, that we held actually from, from the prior company, Mitra Energy, um, undeveloped gas in Vietnam. Yeah. And we're looking to move that project forward now as well. So it's, it's a portfolio across Southeast Asia and into Australia. Uh, it spans five countries and, um, uh, and we're really busy on, on, on all of the assets right now. Yeah. And I'm writing thinking you've had sort of two dips of the CWLH assets. Is that right? right. Uh, I mean, is there a sort of tap that the, 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 the existing uh, owners of that might, might, if you like it so much and it may, comes at the right price, you might do some more? Mm. The, or am I being cheeky? No, no, no. no, you're, no, no, you're, no you're, <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right. The, the, there's an existing operating uh, and, and, and partnership group who really are associated with a much larger portfolio there, the Northwest Shelf assets, yeah. which is huge gas to LNG. A and then on the periphery, there's this small oil asset, uh, Cossack Winnea Lambert Hermes for fields, um, w which is now moving towards maturity. A and in the great scheme of things with the Northwest Shelf gas projects, this doesn't make sense for those partners. And we're talking, you know, Woodside, Chevron, uh, historically BHP and Shell uh, and BP and, and, and Mimi, the, yeah. the Japanese conglomerate. And so these are all, you, you know, big companies uh, owning small interests in a small asset. And, and, you know, inevitably they're now, I think, moving towards a disposal mode. And so um, we started with a BP interest on a, on a bilateral arrangement and, and followed with, with Mimi and We'd love to do more there. Yeah. And ultimately, of course, we do want to operate. Yeah. Ultimately. It makes sense, isn't it? Should we get the elephant in the room out of the way? Because Montara <laughs> was something that, you know, if I'd said, yeah, because, you know, I'm, I'm down on paper ever since you walked into London all those years ago, mm. saying that mm. I think you've got the best management, you know, one of the best management teams. And I mean across the board from top all the way through. And okay. Montara came along and was a... A storm, a real proper storm, mm. and it's taken money and management time. And mm. should we? I mean, the the, mm. the viewers will want to know a little bit of background, but primarily what you've done and how you've got, yeah. and and how much in the past it's like to be yeah. 
Yeah. No, look, it's important that we, we, we talk about Montara. Um, you, you know, as an acquisition in, in 2018 and, and at the time, it caused us to, to raise some money on the London Exchange, 110 million uh, US dollars. It, 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 it uh, was the vehicle that, that took us to list in London. A and it was a very material asset for us at the time, post stag. Uh, really important to, and, and a game changer for the company, um, you know, that, at that moment. Um, we've, um, we've enjoyed you know, a lot of cash flow from the asset. Yeah. And we've invested uh, back into the asset. We've drilled uh, a, a well. We've, we've done uh, a couple of uh, inter well interventions and spent a lot of money o on the facilities. The real issue that we encountered, and it's not something that you can really see when you go through a detailed data room process, even including site visits, which we always like to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to, you know, you've got to touch the steel and look at condition and, you know, pouring over maintenance records is, is, is helpful, but in the end you need to see physical condition. And, and what we saw actually lo looked fine on the surface of it, but I think over the years, and ultimately, with, with um, you know, with a shutdown in in 2022, following um, a, a small leak, what, what we have found is probably uh, a result of um, poor quality conversion. Uh, this is a, this, a, 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 this was a trading tanker yeah. converted to an FBSO, as so many are, a and the conversion work was not of good quality. And we've uh, we've isolated a number of areas within the tanks which need work. And we are well on the way to rectifying them. And of course, you know, as we look forward to what we want from Montara, it is simply, you know, reliability uh, uh, as we continue now to, to reinvest the money that, frankly, we've had from Montara, you know, into a future which will be, you know, new as newer assets, higher value assets, you, you know, lower operating yeah. cost per barrel. And, 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 and following that first inc incident, you know, we, we, we were very clear in our minds, you know, the best way that we can make, uh, uh, you, you know, the business resilient is diversify the portfolio away yeah. from Montara as, as quickly. I mean, you know, not, not at any cost, mm. but as quickly as we could maintaining our, our acquisition criteria. Yeah. And it wasn't as if you weren't always planning. I mean, over the years, I've always, one of the things I always say to you is, you know, have you still got a nice big long list of things you're looking at? And the answer's always been yes. Mm. So, Montara was never going to be a part of it, but it is now going to be a smaller part of the overall yes. JSM business by the very nature of the businesses that you're acquiring and bring yeah. bring into the family. So, it was, we, we thank you for talking about that. Um, no pleasure. Now, Akitsara, you mentioned this. I asked if the first guess was imminent, and it must be um, around the corner. I always think of it as being. You know, end of the sometime in the in the second or third quarter of this year. We, we we've always said to the market second quarter you know twenty four. It, it's a fast track project. Uh, the team have done a great job. I'm 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 proud of you know already five and a half million man hours and and no LTIs. So yeah. it's been a great project from a safety perspective. Um, it, it's in a very remote location. We, we have two thousand people on site today. Uh, and as we work through pre-commissioning and commissioning activities. So all of the equipment is in place, yeah. uh, final hookups, and, and all of the, the, the equipment came in modules, and so everything's been you know, pre-tested, uh, um, and so now it's, it's a bit sort of plug-and-play, bolting it all together yeah. and, and looking at, um, at full systems, and, and that's in full swing. Um, um, I, I won't say exactly when we'll introduce gas so, in, uh, into the plant. No, it's, not, it's not, not far away. No. And, it's and not far away. in terms of what you think you'll be able to get on a daily basis from there, and how quickly you can get to it, is it a is it sort of slow burn until you get, or once you switch it on, will it suddenly be, you know, you'll be able to get a. You know, so the contract uh, for gas sales really determines what we're going to do, and it's pretty much full. Uh, a daily contract quantity from day one. All right. um, we are bringing forward um, um, the wells that will contribute gas into the system. The, the, the story about Akatara 
it, it was a gas field lying on top of a deeper oil field, which which has been abandoned. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so we have all of the, the data from numerous wells yeah. that were used to, to produce oil, but all went through the gas reservoir. And so, you know, we have a tremendous amount of data, far more than you would normally expect. But more importantly, we'll use those wells by recompletion yeah. uh, as gas producers. And so... Yeah. There's, there's five wells will be yeah. in in in, uh, in the development phase. We are working over number four right now, A and in fact, two wells alone could deliver the daily contract quantity. So, um, so the reservoir is prolific. Uh, we'll have no difficulty um, um, with with gas. Uh, and remind me, you partnered in that with or. Oh. We we held a hundred percent interest yes. in the license. We 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 bought at ninety percent. We acquired um, a small part as ten percent interest. Yeah. Um, but as part of working in Indonesia, yeah. we will be required yeah. to uh, farm down ten yeah. percent to yeah. to, yeah. to yeah. local government, yeah. Yeah. And, and that will be done uh, after first gas. Yeah, yeah. Um, excellent. And we've got uh, Vietnam. Jim, presumably you're talking about Nandu and and um, the um, the human discoveries, which are when you look at them and you listen to what the company's been saying, they're potentially very substantial. It's a sort of province, isn't it? Well, tell us a bit more about it because mm. it's the, these are the legacy assets from Mitra Energy, and in fact, historically, Talisman Energy drilled in those licenses too, looking for oil at the time um, a few years ago. And so your team involved? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And so we know we know the uh, the licenses really well, uh, and of course today you know gas in in many ways is is far more desirable uh, as a product stream, uh, and um, as Talisman we developed PM3, which is an adjacent license to to, to the to the Namzu Yumin fields, um, to feed a power station, a, a brand new power station and industrial complex in southern Vietnam. And that gas is now um, running out. It's well past uh, peak production. And so the idea is that we'll bring Namzu Yumin in to replace that gas over time. Uh, and ultimately, through uh, successful exploration, we, we hope we'll add volumes um, um, beyond that, which will be part of the first phase. The first phase development, it, it, it will be um, something along the lines of 80 to 90 million cubic feet oh, today. So yeah. it's, 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 it's substantial. substantial. Yeah. Uh, g gas pricing in the region is, um, is good. A and of course, the infrastructure is already in place. We're going into an existing pipeline to feed an existing power station. And so it's a very simple development, shallow water offshore, two simple uh, unmanned platforms, um, uh, and then tied together brought to a small FPSO for, which is really providing the, uh, a, a footprint for, right. for, for production facilities yeah. that, and then into the pipeline. Right, before we go to the next question and where you go from here and so on, is that I just want to say that because most of these are gas, and because people talk about that part of the world with excitement, is it's, I'd like to have a quick word about gas prices. Yeah. Um, how you sign them up, long or short term, are you still excited about the, the, the gas price and the demand in mm. in the parts of the world? So, I mean, a Asia Pacific is still a part of the world which which is uh, uh, is growing strongly. The all economies are growing strongly there, uh, and um, and energy supply is you know the most important factor. If you know if you think about Indonesia, you know, Vietnam, Malaysia. You know, it's really about yeah. where is um, you know where is the source of primary energy supply coming from, and yeah. and, and and gas remains the, the the first choice, even though you still see coal-fired power stations being built today in the region, and it's yeah. so important therefore that we you know I know that's in China we, we get no it, it's the same it's same in in Indonesia and okay, no. yeah. Both. And, and so, you know, these gas developments really are, are great from an ESG perspective because they are probably displacing coal. Yeah. Uh, most likely. And, um, and we do see a very strong market for domestic gas. Now, of course, LNG runs very strongly across the whole region. Uh, um, but for governments, and, and if we take Namzu Yumin as a 
classic example. Um, you, you know, LNG imports you buy, and and it provides you source of energy and nothing else. Mm -hmm. Domestic gas, you know, brings jobs, uh, uh, brings government taxes and and mm -hmm. and, and uh, royalties, yeah. uh, and um, you, you know, provides uh, um, you know long term uh, uh, opportunity, and so. And so it's far more preferable, and and you know we'll we'll see. I think you know very strong response from from local governments to to see um, to see these developments happen. Yeah. The same was certainly the case at Akatara. Yeah. Uh, and, so and, and strong, I the same. strong demand, good pricing, really, and long term. So that's how we and, and in a way, pricing is linked to LNG. Yeah. Uh, um, b because that is the alternative source or or, or mm -hmm. coal. Uh, and so um, you also have the feature that uh, um, most gas contracts are fixed price uh, with some escalation in, in some cases. And so you have that stability and reliability of cash flows too. And, and so for us, in a balanced portfolio with oil, having fixed price gas is, is a great thing to have. Excellent. Right, let's move on. Mm. Um, You've said a number of times also in the last few months that um, this year, 2024, is going to be a, a year of transition for Jadestone. Uh, as you, you know, as I said, you pivot away from the legacy assets that you started with, which is a good start oil, towards the, the higher value barrels, as you yeah. mentioned, even though they might not be oil, they might be yeah. Um Would you like to expand on, on, on the sort of the management theory as to where, where you go from here? Yes, of course. So, the way I, the way I would think about this, uh, I mean, you know, the underpinning thesis for our business model is is M and A delivers, uh, you know, the strongest growth. Uh, we'll overlay that with organic growth through investment, and we can talk about that with uh, Malaysia assets, is, you know, as, as a great example in in a minute. Um, but M and A is is a, a, um, you know a substantial feature of of the business model, and you know, particularly after 2022 and the shutdown in Montaro, we really felt that we needed to accelerate yeah. uh, uh, this transition. Um, at that point in time, or just prior to that point, you know, Montaro was 80% of our production. Now, by the end of this year, yeah. it'll be 20 to 25%. Yeah. And so we're already moved a long way away from such a heavy reliance on Montaro, and that's really important. But at the same time, and this is the point about transition, um, we'll be adding a lot more gas into the mix. And we talked about, you know, that nice balance and the diversity that brings and, and more cash resilience as a result. Um, but, but also the, the oily assets that we're still keen to, to acquire because we can find, you know, a lot more reinvestment yeah. potential yeah. than the sellers. Uh, and and we can give some specific examples about that moment. Um, um, but but in, even in the in the case of oil assets, we, we are looking at assets where uh, operating costs are significantly below Stagger Montara. Yeah. And so you know the net backs, the the value proposition, is is much greater, and the resilience in mm. in, in oil price downturns yeah. is much stronger. And so for all of these reasons, what we have now is almost, you, you know, a, a two, two tracks within the business. We, we've got the mature assets, Stag and Montaro, oh. which, which will still create value and we yeah. need to work them hard and we will specifically. Uh, um, and then on the other hand, you know, gas and newer oil uh, and you see, um, you know, in some of the data that we've, we've released, uh, um, operating costs per barrel, you know, Fifty, sixty dollars on one side, twenty dollars or less on yeah. the other. You know, and so that's a big difference. And you mentioned Malaysia in particular. Mm. Um, mm. Did, did you want to add something on that specifically, or just is it... the, the assets that we acquired from uh, Sapporo OMV yeah. in in twenty twenty one? We always felt there would be some uh, infill opportunity. We've been yeah. planning an infill, our first infill campaign uh, yeah. through the, through last year. We drilled four wells at the end of the year, and they certainly significantly exceeded our expectations. 
uh, uh, you know, collectively for a short period because of decline, of course. Uh, we added 12,000 barrels a day, more than doubling production. So your infill is what other people's exploration upside. Oh, it, it, was, <laughs> it was an outstanding success. Yeah. But, but importantly, and, and, and this, I think, is, is going to be great for the future, we, we found through the four wells you know, numbers of unswept pockets of oil within the main reservoir, which will target uh, in, in future drilling campaigns. And yeah. in particular to the southwest of the field, uh, uh, you know, right on the edge, uh, um, a, a high structure, which has probably got more than 20 million barrels of oil in place. Yeah. Uh, and um, we're going to need um, three or four wells to, to drain that in a future program. And you've got the technical team to do that. It, it, was, yeah. it was an exploration success in a development <laughs> drilling program. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. <clears throat> right. Um, quick word about the money. Um, because you know, last year and, and so on, and previously with Montara, that did get, cause you uh, a, a few problems and meant that you're not even now quite as strong as you might have looked in the balance sheet environment. Mm. But you, your determination over the last year or six to 12 months, in my view, has been absolutely solid in the sense that you're determined uh, to rebuild um, and you've made significant strides in recent months with the redetermination of your facilities with the banks and so on. Um, why don't you talk me through what you've done? Because you've done a lot and it's important to your shareholders to know that uh, you've restructured and redetermined and you've given yourself options to these terms. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the tendency for us as a business is to be relatively conservative with respect to the balance sheet. We took out an RBL facility when we acquired Montara. We paid it down pretty quickly uh, to become, you know, very quickly net cash and, and built a significant, uh, yeah. um, you know, cash position. Uh, and then, of course, with the incident, uh, and, and then we went through, you know, two years of COVID, low oil price. Yeah, of course, no yeah, investment. yeah, yeah. Um, but but um, but then with the Montara incident and the and most importantly Montara shut down for eight months, you know a, yes a lot of the the cash build uh, was was utilised to fund ongoing activities, yeah. and and we have been over the past eighteen months to two years as busy as we ever have been spending as much money as we ever have more actually yeah both uh, you know in the restoration of Montara. In small, small money, but but it, you know important because it wasn't generating cash. <clears throat> the Akatara development, of course, mm -hmm. importantly, a big drilling program in Malaysia we've talked about, and starting to move away from the reliance on Montara with acquisitions. The first piece of CWLH mm -hmm. uh, from BP, the second piece from Mimi, uh, a very nice gas uh, opportunity in in Thailand, Simphorm. You know, all of this has been added to the portfolio. And so as we enter, you know, 2024, um, you know, our, our, we rely on the RBL to, to, to finish funding yeah. uh, Akatara. But, but once that capital investment ceases and turns yeah, into cash, it great. cash yeah. flow, yeah. Uh, uh, and with the, um, with the other assets uh, now uh, uh, completed, um, the cash build will start again, yeah. and and by its very nature, this you know acquiring cash cash flowing assets, it it, it, it is a cash accretive business model. Yeah. But to put it in in real numbers for you, for you, um, our, our mid year financials um, uh, last year we were net cash five million. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, notwithstanding all, all of the the outage from yeah, from yeah, Montara, yeah, yeah. Uh, and at the end of the year, and these are the last financials that that we had published, uh, we were net debt four million, so it had shifted nine million dollars yeah. at a time of heaviest investment. Yeah, it was a six month period with, with Akatara yeah. at maximum investment, yeah. drilling the campaign in in Malaysia, and so. You know the, the underlying very business. The underlying forward. business is yeah. is not bad at all. If we can just shift away the uh, inability to raise money directly from the current share price, that actually we, we, puts you into a strong position, yeah. and you don't have to worry about the, the share price because when you get it all right, that will truly follow. We 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 certainly hope so. 
I mean, from a business model perspective, we've done everything that we possibly can post Montara's incident to, you know, rebuild and regenerate excitement in, in a growing business. You know, last year we existed or, or you know, we averaged uh, 13,800 barrels a day. You know, we've projected in our guidance yeah. this year a, a midpoint of 21 and a half. Yeah. That's 55% increase in production. Yeah. Yeah. Akatara is a big piece of it, of course. Yeah, of course. But, but, but adding the, you know, the M&A and, and so on yeah. also helps. So, so, you know, this is a transformation and yeah. this is a business now that should start to really generate cash as we move through the year, but most importantly, into 2025. Excellent. I have two more questions before we run out of time, because we're, we're, we're moving the clock very quickly. Mm -hmm. This one may be a short question, but the people I ask all want me to ask. You've been discussed in the same sentence as the Woodside Assets yeah. in recent months, um, which are not insubstantial, um, but would be, you know, a lot of people think a natural fit. Can you tell us any more about how discussions are going? And it will be a big sum of money. How would you fund? How would you fund it? Or you just have, you may have to say, I can't tell you anything, but anything you can tell me. Well, well, our viewers would be interested. Well, of course, you know the the reason the shares are suspended is because there is already too much information in the market, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. And, you know, no, nothing we can do about that. Uh, it, it, and it is a shame because we engage in, you know, 10 or more processes, M&A processes every year. And yeah. we'll discard, you know, eight or, or nine of them and, and pursue, you know, just one or two a, a year. And, 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 and some are small and some are large. And, of course, this is large. Uh, this, is a, this would be the next step game changer for, mm -hmm. for Jade Stone. Uh, um, we like the assets a lot. There is still more work to be done to determine uh, our, our response to, to, to this opportunity. And, and certainly to your point, Malky, you know, with, with the share price where it is, uh, um, that, that, wouldn't, you know, that wouldn't make sense. Yeah. Wouldn't make sense. Um, I'm going to skate across news today. I was going to say, you've got, uh, maybe you could just say in a couple of sentences, because we, we've pretty much discussed it, but News flow that this year is going to be it's going to be good for Shell. There's, there's, there's going to be lots to be talking about, isn't there? So, so you you mentioned the redetermination process. It's the standard, normal part of the RBL process. We're coming up to the next redetermination by the end of this month. It's going fine. There's not much to say, to be honest. The banks are very constructive. The work is well advanced, and and, and that should um, that should come to 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 a close um, at month end. I'm not, I'm not concerned. Uh, uh, as I've said, you know, with with the, the strong production right now, yeah. and with Akatara spend coming to an end, yeah, you know, the, the, and in terms of operationally, um, you, you're in the driving seat. You've got so much good news to come. So, 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 so that that's you know that will come and go. Um, Akatara, we've talked about, um, you know, two Q um, first gas. Yeah. It's on track. Uh, yeah. I, I've said we're in, you know, pre-commissioning, commissioning phase. Yeah. So, so uh, we're delighted with the way the project's going there. Um, we'll be planning for some more drilling activity on in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. uh, we see several, oh, oh, several wells uh, already emerging from the last campaign, and one of the other fields that we haven't drilled at yet, we want to do the same. Yep. So, so there's going to be a lot of excitement there over the next uh, couple of years. Um, we'll, we're looking at another well uh, and a sidetrack at, at Montara and another well at Stan. Yeah. So across the portfolio, there's, there's plenty good, to do. Good news. And yeah. importantly, we do want to get Vietnam yeah. off. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. I really do. So we've pretty much discussed it, but we've run out of time, I'm afraid. Um, and we're, in, we're into this sort of yeah, they, little period in the, in the corner. I always ask the same question at the very end. Um, and we've discussed so much of it that it's probably a fairly short answer anyway. Where do you see Jade Stone in 12 to 18 months' time? When you're back here in the autumn of you know, <laughs> <laughs> 25, yeah. where, where do you see yeah. Jade Stone? Um, I, I hope we'll be a bigger company and, and more robust as a result. Uh, I really would like to see an, another gas project kicked off after Akatara, preferably in Vietnam. 
uh, and with some more consolidation in the oil space, uh, it would be nice to see um, a, a bigger, more robust company uh, with a healthy balance sheet. And we're striving for that and working our socks off to deliver it. Paul, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I've been Malcolm Graham Wood and I'm here at um, Call London Studios uh, doing my CEO interview. Uh, my guest today has been Paul Blakely, President and CEO of Jade Sen Energy. Thank you very much, uh, Paul, for joining me for a fascinating discussion about the company. And thank you all for watching and I uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye for now.